Landing the desired spot on Shark Tank is the chance of a lifetime for a growing entrepreneur. But while some entrepreneurs can impress the sharks out the gate, others aren't so lucky and go home empty-handed. Part of what makes Shark Tank great is the unscripted, real-life quality that no longer exists in most reality television. As a result, most fans know that none of the entrepreneurs who pitch their businesses are actors, that the most famous sharks really do invest their own money, and many other facts about the show. Hundreds of entrepreneurs have pitched their companies on the show since it debuted in 2009, but some of the most memorable pitches offer the craziest and most bizarre products. More often than not, an investor appears on an episode of the hit reality series for a free advertisement or with a product that soon becomes a complete ripoff. Today, we're talking about some of the worst ideas in the history of Shark Tank. So, without any further ado, let's take a look at 10 bizarre items featured on Shark Tank. A West Palm Beach police officer developed the Kate app after a colleague got divorced because his wife had found text messages between him and his mistress. The app helps people being unfaithful in their relationships wipe their phones, so their secret messages aren't visible to their spouses. The founder of Kate's app claims he didn't set out to sell a cheater's app, but marketing for the app includes the word mistress and advertises tools to block calls and texts so your spouse doesn't see them. Even though it was strange that a product like this entered the show, Sharks Kevin O'Leary and Damon John teamed up to invest $70,000 for a 35% stake in it. After the episode aired, they got 10,000 new downloads, and most of the new customers were women. But it looks like it did not go far. Michael DeSanti appeared on the fourth season with one of the most shocking products ever to appear on the show, the first squirrel-proof bird feeder. The man asked for an investment worth $1.3 million for a 40% stake. According to him, the only way to keep those annoying squirrels away from your bird feeders is to give them a harmless static shock. The squirrel boss arrives with a tiny remote control that sends an electrical current through the feeder and into the squirrels if they attempt to rob the contents out of the feeder. Although the inventor pitched it as being harmless to the squirrels, the sharks beg to differ. Animal cruelty aside, another problem was that you'd need to be sitting around all day holding your control at the ready for this product to work. Not only did the sharks not like the idea of torturing the animals after feeling the shock themselves and passed on the idea for being too cruel, but they also laughed the inventor off the stage. Wake and Bacon is a wooden alarm clock that broils bacon set to the time you wake up. Its investor Matty Salen claimed hundreds of people had emailed him with requests for the product, which led him to show up on the Shark Tank in 2011 looking for $40,000 for 20% of his company. He brought a few pictures of the potential design of the new Wake and Bacon, which displays a toaster oven type alarm clock that has ears and hooves that resemble a pig. Not only did Salen not know basics like the cost of production, but the clock was a potential fire hazard. Besides, the Sharks pointed out that the novelty would eventually wear thin for many bacon fans whose rooms developed a permanent aroma of grease. Neither of the Sharks liked the idea, and O'Leary even told him that his product would end up in his museum of really bad ideas that kill people. This is going to be a present for Dad because it's so darn stupid. <laughs> and Mark Cuban puts his dough into stupid ideas, is that what I'm hearing here it's today? It's a gag gift. The problem is, I'm not going to put up the 130000 that's the problem. Belinda James is the founder of a company that sells custom mirrors to individuals and businesses. And although she only sold $85,000 worth of her product before appearing on the show, she valued her company at $1 million, asking for $200,000 for 20% of her business. Her skinny mirrors are designed to make viewers appear skinnier than they actually are. But when several of the sharks said it was a con, Belinda said that one could buy a slimming mirror elsewhere and tried extolling the virtues of businesses selling more products when women look at themselves trying on clothes in a skinny mirror. The shark O'Leary was so frustrated she said to James that she could smile all she wanted, but the truth was she was lying to people before he forbade any other shark from investing in the product. Eterneva appeared on Shark Tank to promote a business that would create diamonds from the ashes of customers' loved ones. Cremation had already overtaken burial as the most common way to dispose of human remains in the U.S., and it had been expected to be more common than burial worldwide. So the founders assured Cuban to buy 9% of the business for $600,000. But shortly after the shark did that, diamond expert and gemologist Grant Mobley publicly accused Eterneva of being nothing more than a scam. He said that companies like Eterneva had been around for more than a decade, and soon these scams were well known within the jewelry industry. Mobley was pretty sure there was no way there could be enough carbon left after cremation to make a diamond. So when mourning families pay a lot more than the cost of an actual diamond the same size for rocks from Eterneva and companies like it, they get an artificial diamond with no value and no ties to the ashes of a loved one. 
When Ryan Custer appeared on the show, he wanted $150,000 for 30% of his Cougar energy business. The company was dedicated to making energy drink shot bottles specifically tailored to single, middle-aged women wanting to date young men like himself. Ryan claimed that it was the industry's first gender-specific functional beverage. But the idea was terrible on so many levels. Not only was it for a small target market, but also women between the ages of 35 and 55 hardly seem like the prime demographic of energy drink consumers. On top of that, he only had $60,000 in sales over three years. And according to Barbara Karokin, the drink tasted like chalk. So it was apparent he would move out of the tank empty-handed. Isn't a cougar typically older? Cause she looks younger than you are. Well, she's been drinking the cougar, the, <laughs> the cougar shot for a while now, so. Since Jack Berenger had struggled with losing weight, his doctor told him to start doing push-ups, which he found a challenging thing to do. So he figured out something to help himself, as the Body Jack is a machine that will help you do push-ups. But when he presented his product to the Sharks, Barbara Corcoran told him to lose 30 pounds if he wanted to get an investment from herself and Kevin Harrington. He did lose the weight, and the Sharks invested the funds, but the Body Jack soon became a big bust. The company has apparently fallen apart without any given reason. My worst was investing in a fast-talking cowboy selling exercise equipment who needed to lose 50 pounds. Instead, he lost my $50,000, Corcoran told Forbes. George Conway came to the show to seek an investment of $200,000 in exchange for 15% of his company called Bed Rider that produced safety seats for the backs of pickup trucks. Although Conway was undoubtedly a great salesman, being animated and fun as he demonstrated the product on a pickup, his answers to the investor's most important questions left them shaking their heads. First, the investor mentioned that although he was 53 years old, lifting the bed rider wasn't that bad. Then, when Lori wondered if there was anything inside the truck that George was securing the system to, George explained there were three bolts in the truck, as the user had to drill the holes into their own truck to secure bed rider down. Then, when he asked if the bed rider had undergone crash testing, Conway replied that he'd done his own testing by accident. The Sharks really liked Conway as a person, but the number of things that could go wrong with the deal caused them all to back out. Kevin O'Leary even finished the whole segment by telling the man to take his truck and drive it off a cliff. When a tycoon real estate founder and CEO Aaron McDaniel pitched his real estate crowdfunding service, he got a pretty hostile reception from the Sharks, who called his pitch risky and a ripoff, especially Mark Cuban. Aaron started the pitch by telling the Sharks that real estate had been proven to be the most consistently safe way to grow wealth for hundreds of years. But Aaron was seeking a $50,000 investment for 5% of the company since, as he explained, real estate negotiations could be intimidating, complex, and expensive, with the best deals being reserved for the rich. Not only was Mark not buying it, but it took him less than a minute to state that he hated the pitch and the product and that he was out, yelling the idea was scammy. O'Leary even asked the presenter if he had a criminal record. But Mark was so frustrated that during the conversation between the presenter and the other sharks, he kept yelling the product's name, Tycoon, saying that it was a rip-off name. Just think of the name, Tycoon! Tycoon! Please. Tycoon, what does it say to a small investor? It's a rip-off name. If you have trouble starting difficult conversations with your partner, maybe the idea behind the following product would help. No one likes those we-need-to-talk conversations. But they are necessary. And most of the time, you don't know that you need to have that talk until you start getting the cold shoulder and end up sleeping on the couch. Jason and Amanda Adams founded an elephant chat and pitched their conversation starting tool on the Shark Tank episode from 2013. It's a stuffed elephant put into a plexiglass case with a metal cover. So every time you start an argument with your partner, you should take off the cover so there's an elephant in the room. The partner should accept the elephant and both of you can start taking turns passing the animal back and forth, each sharing what's on your mind. Although this is a pretty grown-up thing to do, it is still a pretty bizarre idea. So all of the sharks refuse to make an offer. The couple eventually split and the elephant chat box is no longer for sale. Be sure to comment down below and let us know if we've missed something. Hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell to never miss an upload. Thank you very much for watching.